Today we're going to be discussing the great Viennese composer Johannes Strauss II. His father, Johannes Strauss I, was also a great composer. And yet he didn't want his son, Johann the Junior, to become a musician. He actually wanted him to become a banker. So Johann Strauss the Younger used to take violin lessons without his father's knowledge. He would practice the violin in secret. But eventually his love of music won over, so much so that by 1844 he was able to actually set up his own band. Of course he came from a musical family, so he had absorbed all the knowledge he needed. But it took time for his father to accept this. Another turning point was in 1845, when he became the bandmaster of the Second Vienna Citizens Regiment. And all these unusual names and descriptions actually played a part. Then in 1847, the Vienna Men's Choral Association took him on. And that was when he actually wrote his famous Blue Danube Waltz. Uh, one of the most loved of all waltzes. It has defined the dance genre for centuries, the Blue Danube Waltz. And that's what we're going to be looking at today. But let's discuss a little bit of Strauss's life. I mean, he was actually a prolific figure in Europe, as it were. He didn't waste any opportunity to commemorate famous European events for decades. He would write music for the opening of railways and other historical events. He was a, an iconic character, and one could almost map the history of Europe looking at his great compositions. He collected medals. He, he was honored by dignitaries. He traveled Europe. He, he performed in Russia. And we're anyway, going back a little bit. All of this is going well. As we said, 1844, he started to win his musical independence. 1845, he was given a position as a bandmaster. 1847, he was already honored by the Vienna Men's Choral Association. But all of this hard work took its toll. So by 1853, Strauss suffered a mental or nervous breakdown. His doctor advised him to take some rest, and he traveled to various places, one of which was Bad Gasti in some rural area, beautiful country scene. So in 1854, 1855, somehow during his trips to Bad Gastin, he made the acquaintance of the Tsarskoye Selo Railway, Co Railway Company. Tsarskoye Selo Railway Company. And it is thought that during one of these visits to Bad Gastin, he agreed with the Tsarskoye Selo Railway Company to conduct at the Vorhor Pavilion which was in Pavlovsk, in Russia. And this was such a lucrative venture that he, he did this from 1856 to 1865. So he didn't just sit in Vienna, he traveled around Europe. And his most prolific period was essentially from the 1850s to the 1870s. He had full autonomy, together with his brother Joseph, over the dance scene in, in, in Austria and Europe in general. During this time, he composed many of his most prolific works, the Champagne Polka, the Trich Trash Polka, the Egyptische Marsch, and this was a highly successful time during his life. Now, as we said, during the 1860s, he was Europe's leading composer of dance music, but it wasn't just mundane dance music. He actually had developed such a degree of sophistication in his orchestration technique that he was admired by great composers of the time, such as Brahms and Wagner and Verdi. He in turn paid tribute to some of these composers using their themes in his works. And it was his ability to orchestrate and his mastery of, uh, his mastery of effect in music that actually lifted the dance genre to a new level of sophistication. Uh, one looks at the Blue Daniel. Let, let us discuss the work briefly. We're going to analyze it in a moment. And his understanding of form pumped new life into the genre. Previously, the waltz had developed from slightly more rustic dances in, in Europe, such as the Lenda and others. But Strauss took the, the waltz and he actually turned it into a, a, a concert piece. The, the interludes between movements, or rather the connections between the movements, were sophisticated. They had all the finesse of a composer who could write concert music suitable for, the, for a discerning audience at the time. And he expanded the world's form, he, he created the idea of an introduction and a code. It became a respected and sophisticated genre of the world's. So we're going to look 
at the Blue Jenny Wells, known as the Andes Schön and Blauen Donau, on the, the shores of the, uh, the uh, next to the beautiful and blue Jenny, translated actually. And we're going to look at some of the movements very briefly and, and look at some of the features which Strauss uh, created in the music. He was a prolific composer and his life was packed with all sorts of things. And he, he did honor to his country, to Europe in general. He was honored by dignitaries. So this was Johann Strauss the second, Johann Strauss the younger. Johann Strauss the second, also known as Johann Strauss the younger, was born on the 25th of October 1825 and died on the 3rd of June 1899. He was a composer, conductor and violinist and the eldest son of Johann Strauss I. He grew up in a musical family and was surrounded by music from a young age. While his father wanted him to pursue a career in banking, he followed his heart and pursued music going so far as to study the violin without his father's knowledge. Throughout much of his life, he commemorated musically significant social, cultural, technological or political events in Vienna, the Habsburg Empire and in Europe in general. Together with Joseph Strauss, his brother, he held sway over Vienna's dance music scene from the late 1850s until Joseph's death in 1870. This coincided with his most fruitful period as a composer of waltzes. Amongst other works, his Ander Schönen Blauen Donau ensued from this period. By the mid-1860s, he had established himself as Europe's leading composer of dance music. His innate skill at instrumentation and melodic convention drew praise from Brahms, Rubinstein, Verdi and Wagner. Strauss extended the waltz's form and ensured a sense of homogeneity and balance between the individual movements of a work through melodic and harmonic means. His mastery of orchestration and his grasp of effect took dance music to a whole new level of sophistication. Strauss composed and premiered his Ander Schönen Blauen Donner in Vienna in February 1867, first as a choral piece for the Vienna Men's Choral Association. It has five interlinked waltz themes. It was designed to lift the spirit of the Austrian nation after its defeat by Prussia in the Seven Weeks War. Shortly thereafter, Strauss then adapted the work for orchestra. This orchestral version was premiered in Paris and proved to be the most popular. While the introduction to a waltz is typically a simple passage whose function is to call dancers to the dance floor, Strauss transforms it into a prelude which previews snippets from the waltz's main themes. Thereafter, five waltz themes are heard. It is a tribute to Strauss's sophistication as an orchestrator that each of these themes is linked with the same degree of finesse as the concert music of the time. Here you can hear where the work commences with an extended introduction in the key of A major with shimmering tremolos and the violins and the horn stating the waltz theme. Three downward moving bass notes usher in the first waltz theme.
Here you can hear the first world's theme. It consists of a rising triad played by the cellos and horns in the tonic of D major accompanied by the harp. The Viennese waltz beat is accentuated at the end of each three note phrase. The waltz 1A ends its statement of the motif and waltz 1B follows in the same key. Here you can hear where Welts II enters quietly. This is followed by a short contrasting middle section in B flat major. Here you can hear where Welts 3A is introduced in G major before a quaver melody phrase. A loud introduction in G minor is then heard. Here you can hear where Waltz 4A enters in a more romantic mood. This is followed by a more joyous Waltz 4B in the same key. Here you can hear where the clarinets state the melody of Waltz 5A in A major. Here you can hear Waltz 5B, which is the climax, and is punctuated by cymbal crashes. Here 
Here you can hear the coda, which recalls earlier sections, namely 3A and 2A. Then, furious chords usher in a recapitulation of Waltz 4A. Then it is cut short, and the Waltz hurries back to Waltz 1A. This in turn is cut short by the final codetta. A variation of 1A is presented, 